So hey, what's up, everyone? You're currently tuned into TBD on the live stream or on KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara and netnetradio.com out of Tijuana. I'm joined by my new friends in eye candy out of Oxnard. So how, how have you guys been holding up during quarantine? What have you been up to? How have you adapted? How do you like virtual gigs? The world has been pretty chaotic the past couple of months, especially for those living in the U.S. Oh, uh, yeah. This is actually like our first virtual gig. We haven't really done anything before this. Oh, hell yeah. Mostly just writing music, recording music. Yeah. Not really thinking about shows right now just because we can't. And it kind of bumps us out. Yeah, yeah. It's a major bummer. I guess what have you guys been up to otherwise, like non-music-wise and stuff? Do you guys have any, like, hobbies that you picked up or just hobbies that you've always had, like... Uh, <laughs> anybody anybody can go. You guys can just start talking if you want. I, I don't think I've done anything different. Oh, uh, yeah. Listening to a bunch of music, movies. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's the real thing is uh, we, it gave us, finally gave us time to just focus on this, especially. Yeah. So like, whenever we get any like sense of free time, this is it, you know, working yeah. on music, I guess, like with each other. Yeah, hell yeah, that's dope. We did start a movie club. Yeah. Did so you guys? Like, you so started? Like, maybe like, 10, I'd say like 10 of our friends, I guess. Yeah. We pick a movie a week and we watch it and we get on Zoom and I'll talk about it. Dude, that's honestly that's honestly really cool. Uh, is that open to like you know, in the yeah. public or anything? Like, would you encourage like people to join that? Love yeah. People to come. Hell yeah! So how can they get involved if they're interested? Just yeah, DM us. DM our band. Yeah, DM yeah. the DM the band Instagram. Hell yeah, dude! That's at uh at it looks like Bluxent, right? I don't know how you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at Bluxent, hit them up if you want to join the movie club. Like, what kind of movies have you guys watched? We've only seen a couple so far where we just watched I Am Sam. I Am Sam? I don't even know what that one's about. What is that about? Uh, you never you seen that movie with Sean Penn? It's like a, it's a sad movie. He's like, he has like a disability. Uh, Very be, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> it's like any types of movies. It doesn't really matter. It's That's like, it's just, it's just enough. Uh, it would just have to be one to discuss about. Like, yeah. You have to it. We just put a name, a rap, like a pick a name out of a hat. And so they get to pick the movie. So, so what are some names that are in, oh, do you guys like choose that like beforehand or like, do you guys have like a, well, everyone, who, everyone who's like in the, in the chat, yeah. we put their name in the hat and they get to pick the movie. Oh dude, that's honestly so sick. <laughs> Hell I yeah. I am saying that was my choice. That was your uh, choice? Yeah. I'd never seen it. So I picked it. It was really good. That's dope. Uh, I'm trying to see what was the last movie I watched, dude. I don't watch very many movies. I feel like I'm usually like doing like music stuff and stuff. My friends are like you never watch movies like that's so weird i'm just like so like uncultured when it comes to movies but i think i watched like this like weird documentary called like like my octopus like friend or something on netflix dude, dude. i heard about that i heard about that movie it's like he be friends he be friends like an octopus right or something dude like that. it's honestly crazy bro like i'm just like watching this and i'm like what the hell this is insane <laughs> you know and like the filming is honestly cool like it looks cool you know what i'm saying and like He's just underwater, like swimming with this octopus, and like the octopus will like hug him and stuff. And I'm just like, dude, this is so wild. Like, is it real? Is it real? Yeah, octopus? he, he yeah, does it. For, <laughs> he does it for like uh for like ten days or whatever the amount of time, right? Like he spends every day with the octopus. Dude, it's for I a long that. ass time. Yeah. I think it's like a year or something. <laughs> dude, yeah, he's like every day. <laughs> insane, dude. It. Every yeah. single day, he like brings his son down there and stuff. Like, and there's chill. Like the octopus will leave because it gets scared, and he like searches like all around the reef for it and stuff. You know, it's a uh, it's really interesting and then at the end like the octopus dies dude and like the guy is literally, literally like crying talking about it and i'm just like oh my god oh, dude, dude. spoiled it <laughs> oh, shit. oh damn dude oh my bad see that's that's the other thing dude i just spoil movies all the time i'm just like dude might as well just not watch like i just ruin it for other people too yeah and it's it, cool because like not personally as coming from like not like a huge uh book reader yeah it's kind of like, a lot of time yeah i uh you know, you find movies and music go like hand in hand. When oh, it comes for to sure. Yeah. Reading music. Cause it's like just endless, like amazing inspiration by watching like really good movies. Oh, for sure. Oh, dude. Another really good movie that I watched for the first time recently is the shining. Have you guys seen that one? Classic yeah. dude. That one's so sick, dude. Oh my God. Like perfect. it's a perfect movie. Oh dude. Literally perfect. God. Like, yeah. First time I, I lived in a co-op with like a bunch of like I lived with like 20 people or something like that. And, uh, you know, like beginning of like COVID, like literally a year ago now, but like, we're like, what should we do? And they're like, let's watch movies. And, uh, you know, they're like, you've never seen the shining dude. Like literally like 19 people, you've never seen the shining. And I'm like, dude, like, (laughs) 
Yeah, but anyways, it was so sick, dude. Yeah, that that's super cool that you guys are doing the book club. Do you guys have a name for it? Or a movie club, I mean? No? That's, that's, that's what it's called, movie club. Literally just movie club, dude. Hit hit up at Bluxent for the, uh, the movie club. Uh, that's dope, though, guys. So I guess, like, jumping into, like, your project, uh, what can you tell me about Eye Candy? Like, give us the big picture. Bring us back to, like, your humble beginnings. Were you guys, like, involved in, like, any previous projects that led to, like, what Eye Candy is now or anything? Um, well, we were like, we were a band before quarantine and everything. Yeah. We, what we did is we started like playing shows before like having released music out. Yeah. So we didn't, we have like, like demos out, like singles, mm-hmm. but this was like our first, like, I guess, official release. And this was all during quarantine. Our well, first project. Yeah. Like put together. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it's like the first, like, I guess, you know, you sat you down and you had like a concept, like, like all the songs are kind of like one one thing exactly yeah like one body of work that's tight um so like were you guys in any other bands or was this like kind of like your first thing like let's start playing together type deal we uh pretty sure it was all of our first bands right yeah well i i was in like bands but it's like just like covering like the the stooges and that nothing like real you know (laughs) yeah that's dope (laughs) yeah this is our first like legit like serious band i guess yeah, that's super cool. So, how'd you guys like come together? Were you guys all homies beforehand, or we met? We met in high school. Yeah, we met in high school, and then we were at. Should we just say like how? His mutual friends. We met. Yeah. Yeah, screw him. Him. We met him. We met him. We met yeah, him. Met, I met him at a festival. Oh, when we really? were like in high school at a. Uh, remember those like burger record festivals? <laughs> yes, dude. Yes. Was it like Burgerama or something? Yeah, or Beach Goth. Oh, a beach cop? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, we met at that. We were all little. I remember uh, when we went there, I met him, and I was just like, I just don't like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but then and then we needed a bass player because we were fresh, like 2017. Yeah. And uh, uh, somehow me and Cameron linked up, and yeah. then he became our bass player basically ever since then. That's dope. What do you guys all play? So you play bass, Cameron, right? And then? Then I uh, guitar. And then you play guitar, yeah. and you play I'm, drums. I'm just the drummer. Hell yeah, dude, the <laughs> drummer. Um, you know what's really funny? Actually, you sent me that. Uh, I think Cameron sent me that photo of like you know your like band photo or whatever. And dude, you guys look so dope. Like you guys look like uh like a lolly. Like you guys remind me of Mystic Braves, to be honest. I don't. Know. <laughs> How do we, I think it's like an band, right? Dude, you guys, yeah, yeah dude, Mystic I, Braves. I used to like, love Mystic Braves when I was like 15. Yeah, dude, they're like the one of the biggest like lollipop bands, you know, like you know, like that psychedelic like, stuff, you know, like that surf kind of wave in that era, the 2016, 2015. Yeah, era. with like the organ and stuff, you know, like, oh, like dude. a little psychedelic kind of. Yeah, dude, I used to love yeah. that band when I was uh like 18, dude. Yeah, I remember "Tripping Like I Do" was one of the first songs I learned on guitar. Oh, really? That's sick. That's <laughs> it was so funny. That's so funny. What a coincidence, dude! First song uh, you learned on guitar, and then your your guys' aesthetic is Mystic Braves Core. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm moved on. I'm moved on. Moved on. Moved on. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I remember I uh went to, dude. What's that huge music festival that happens in the desert? Desert Days. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Been, but I know what it is. yeah we went to a desert days in like 20 honestly like 2015 i think it was and it was not like it was now and it was like super poorly organized and i just remember being like extremely dehydrated and it's like 1 a.m and mystic braves just playing dude so okay. sick so sick it was honestly a terrible <laughs> well, experience i feel like but at the same time it's like you look back on it and you're like that's sick yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like I love being young and just like not caring about anything. Exactly, dude. Like <laughs> you know, we're we're just like sitting, like, ah, uh, dude, who was it? Do you remember this artist, like Dan Deacon? Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, Dan Deacon's pretty cool. So Dan Deacon played that year, and I remember we're like, dude, hell yeah, Dan Deacon's gonna play. And uh, dude, we like only brought like two cases of water, and there was like no shade at this entire place, and we had already like went through all of our water because like we thought that the gates would open really early for this music festival, right? And they totally didn't let us in until like 12 p.m. And we're just like sitting in the hot ass sun. Like, dude, it was so bad. Like, there's no shade. We're sitting in this terrible, like, this like really bad like tent. And, uh, you know, we had to wait until like three or four until the festival started. And we're just like sitting there super tired under this palm tree. Oh, dude, 
crazy memories mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying dude, being, being dehydrated is like one of the worst feelings in the oh world. my god dude it was so bad but um, like, <laughs> yeah I, I went to i went to coachella because i had a free ticket someone gave me a free ticket to coachella yeah and I, and I got dehydrated and i like had to be in my tent while i'm missing like gucci main i guess like gucci main damn Bro, and like future and i missed like all that and i was like damn just because i didn't drink water my mom won coachella tickets on the radio yeah and uh, she won two of them and i was really uh bummed out because she did not take me really that was, that was the year refused got back together and at the drive-in damn oh my God. but that's yeah. so funny yeah dude i've never been to coachella actually um it's you know i've like always wanted to go when i was a little kid you know what i'm saying dude yeah, like when you're a little kid yeah that dude. DVD with the white stripes on it is amazing yeah dude <laughs> I used to walk all the time. Uh, do you remember that band Real Estate? I think they got me into like wanting to go to Coachella and stuff. My parents yeah. are like, you can't go to a festival. There's like, <laughs> there's drugs there. Like, <laughs> see, I remember I went. I was like, I think twelve, and I went with my parents. Like, they're the ones who took me. Oh, really? Yeah, because they're like, they're kind of like into like music and shit. So they're the ones who took me to Coachella when I was little. That's honestly so sick, though. I wish I had parents that would take me to shows. Me too. But anyways, um. <laughs> So, um, I guess being Oxnard based, like I know Oxnard has had like a very rich music scene or they always like have, you know, and they still do, um, that's sort of like ebbed and flow over the years, like come in like different waves and stuff like that. Um, has this Oxnard scene kind of like influenced your creativity in any way? We've always been a band like ever since our inception. That's like not like to be as corny as possible. It's like, we just like we know we don't we still don't necessarily fit into any specific scene right now yeah so I feel it's you. like um we like when it comes to like oxnard bands like of course like growing up like yeah like the older like nardcore shit, it's like, kind of inspirational but like when it comes to like what we like it's like like far away from here you know oh 100 like, if when it comes to inspiration it's like going to shows and seeing these people play yeah and being like just feeling that itch to just like do it ourselves pretty much yeah that's that's it yeah we said not really not when we really used to go to shows music, before yeah. we were a band we would just be like we could fucking do this yeah, yeah it wasn't like, we the actual music this. it was just the fact because we don't think there, there's not that much music at least that not the ones that i when it comes I to what, yeah what, what we were involved in low-key scenes like it wasn't like a big thing like we yeah. weren't ever that's the problem we were never involved in like anything <laughs> popular yeah yeah i hear you yeah. um it's just like uh, either hardcore or like uh, um, what do you call the other like like rock beach or, pop or yeah, like bedroom pop mm-hmm. and then and then there's like no middle I guess there's, yeah we don't yeah but the, and the bands that are in the middle don't sound alike if that makes sense like oh. the ones that I think of is like out west like they're probably like good friends yeah, of ours. And, they're cool yeah. and they're like and we're like nothing alike but we still ended up playing a lot of shows together just because we're not hardcore or like beach pop it's funny because this is like exactly kind of what like out west was saying when I kind of asked them like a similar like question, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're just like, uh, well, we don't really like fit in with like hardcore. Like we don't really fit in with like the indie stuff, you know, like we're kind of just like chilling right in the middle, which like, what, what are we saying? What, what was really cool, at least in the beginning of 2020, when we started playing like a couple shows a month or more and more shows before everything got, Oh, sorry. I don't know if I can curse, but right. before we started playing, uh, we started playing more and more shows you could feel that kind of energy build and build because we obviously we used to play a lot of shows throughout the years where it's like no reaction no like real uh energy you get back from that crowd yeah but you could start to feel like in 2020 that kind of switch Uh when we started playing where um people started it kind of started to click for people and like people finally started to enjoy our music in like a live sense at least yeah that's really sick yeah, because for the longest time, like, people just did not <laughs> Yeah, I could see that, dude. I feel like what I've noticed in, like, Oxnard, or, like, just Ventura and stuff, at least, it's, like, I feel like it's mostly, like, the hardcore scenes that get a lot of people to show up, you know? Dude, um like, some of our biggest shows are with hardcore acts. Yeah, it's insane, dude. Like, all the hardcore bands, they have, like, groupies, bro. Like, and they're just locals. It's insane to me. Um, but it's, like, when you have, like, local, like, indie bands and stuff, it's, like, kind of just their homies show up or something. You know what I'm saying? At yeah, first, yeah. Like, I get it. Like, it's a hardcore band. Like, even if you don't really care for the music, like, it's fast and it's loud, so you can just fun. move and, like, it's a exactly. lot of fun. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's so much fun. Like. Oh, hardcore is so fun. Um, yeah, I've only, yeah. 
like thrown a couple couple shows like that in Santa Barbara but when I was like living up there still um you know I was like looking to bring more of like a like I guess diverse scene in Santa Barbara just because I feel like that was a thing for a long time do you guys remember like fun zone at all I went to one show there oh you went to one yeah fun zone was tight bro and like right like next to like a baseball yeah next to the batting cages yeah that was my friend Spencer running that and like I feel like that was pretty much like the entire scene in Santa Barbara you know and then uh what's it called after like Spencer was just one day like probably not one day but was like yo I'm moving to Philly and then just quit fun zone and then the Santa Barbara scene just like died you know except for like a couple people like running things and so I was trying to bring like other stuff but it's like sometimes hard to get people to come out because they you know it's not always like fast like you can't always promise like just fast and loud to get people to come through anyways yeah I, I know what you're I know what you guys are saying though so that's probably the hardest part is spots oh it's like the play dude. here especially for sure so that's that's always been our detriment like uh-huh. we we played we played countless house shows you know yeah but it's a real legit like spots it's so Hard to come back dude it's so hard dude and it's like there'll be like one person doing it for a little while and then they'll like leave or something and then it's like all right well that scene you know is yeah. gone and it's um, like see like a, a couple times like we've been like not being able to play or like we'll get one song in the cops will come we can't play I've, I've had i've had one time we played at like this dude's like backyard and it wasn't even like a cop issue like this dude just came up to me and just grabbed my bass like mid song <laughs> what yeah. yeah he just like grabbed it at my hand i was like pushing him off and like we had to stop the song and like that's happened twice like, yeah. and the next yeah the next the next show a random dude came in the backyard and grabbed my bass again oh my like, god like, Where are people coming from? so random it was, it was yeah. hilarious oh my god that's insane dude <laughs> i was like what the fuck? And it was on the same song too i was like fuck this i don't know what's going on that song is cursed yeah dude that's insane i've never uh experienced anything like that um you know, if you guys are looking for some crazy stories, at least from like Santa Barbara, at least you should look up this uh, page called Santa Barbara Babylon. It's honestly so sick. Do you guys know anything about like Santa Barbara's like, you know, music history, like punk scene or anything back in the day? Do you guys know Ebolition yeah. Records? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, Ebolition, they had like a like still life, a lot of like the really pioneering like emo bands, like emo core, like screamo and stuff. Like I think they've had like Orchid and stuff, you know. Anyways. So that was like a really big thing in like Santa Barbara Ivy and like Santa Barbara Babylon just post flyers from that scene. And anyways, um, there was this show flyer they posted of this band called Nuzzle um, at this like at the vegan co-op, like one of my friend's houses. And this is from like 90, like seven or something. And anyways, they were talking about how uh, the like the show got rolled or whatever by some cops and then some kid went and stole the cop car to like keep the show going and just drove the cop car down the street and then the show just kept going and i was like dude that's funny that'd be so sick dude i wish like something like that would happen nowadays like now you just get shot you know what i'm saying like (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, yeah, there's no chance bro like you get close to a cop car and they're like oh my god that kid had a gun you know anyways um so you guys just dropped your uh, latest record, Supernova, on Valentine's Day, I believe. What can you tell me about that? I know we like kind of already mentioned that briefly, but can you guys go like in depth anymore on like how that went down? We kind of realized we needed to put something out because it was getting too long since we had last played a show, obviously. Yeah. Which was like March of 2020. Yeah. And it was getting to the point where it's like, well, what the, what are we doing? You know, we need to, we kind of need to release something. Obviously, we've been writing songs this whole time, mm-hmm. but it's like we need to like have something, or else it's like we're we're kind of it seems like we're dead, you know? Yeah, exactly. So like, kind of worked out, and then like, miraculously, like Valentine's Day was just coming up, and it was just the perfect day for it. Yeah, and you're like, well, it's done. Might as well drop this at this time. That's cool. Yeah. We um, did take like a, the big break, obviously, when it was like the real lockdown stuff, like yeah. from March or whenever June, July. Yeah, yeah, we took it. We, we weren't practicing for a while, so then I did take like a l- little bit to get back into it. Yeah. And stuff, but then we wrote it. Yeah, we wrote that. In a month. Oh really? Yeah. That's quick, dude. Damn, that's insane. Yeah. It um, was, it was just fun, you know. It that was kind of the whole goal is just to have a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun, just make something. Else. Not really fun. It I think fun. it was like the writing process was different too. I think it was like because we're all spending so much time at home and we're not together. It's like instead of coming in here and like trying to work out, like we have more stuff that we came in with. Yeah. Flesh out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that, we've gotten kind of 
in a weird way lucky because we've been get been, to, been together for so long now like obviously we have like no like we have no like real like ground to stand on until now uh-huh. but that's only because like we've like had like so much time to develop such a chemistry uh-huh. when it comes to like, writing songs and playing together yeah so why it's like now it's just like everything's so natural and like not simple but it just it's 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 easier to get everything that's in here and in here like out yeah when we make when we make songs it's like we're really lucky like we've been, we've just been putting in work for years so it's like now it's like okay let's start dropping stuff mm-hmm. yeah that's sick so um i was also going to mention too uh it sound your your new music honestly sounds like completely different from like you know your stuff from like two three years ago that you have on soundcloud you know like your singles and stuff um you know, it um, like your your earlier stuff almost sounds like lighter and like poppier. Uh, this new record, on the other hand, like totally reminds me of like Unwound, Shellac, Slint, like Sprain, like that realm of bands. Like, is that something you're going for? So, so yeah. You want to say something? Well, I I don't because that someone has said that before about the other band. Yeah, it's the uh, like Unwound is like we've got heard that. I, I don't think we really listen. Uh, I mean, I, I've heard of them, but we don't. I don't think we really even listen to them. Or even any of those. Oh really? Yeah. But yeah. I do. Oh I wow, do. that's no, like I, I love. I love. I'm, but it's not I'm not a not huge. Inspiration. I'm not a huge fan mm-hmm. of Unwound. Yeah, exactly. Like I like yeah. Unwound. Yeah. But Slint's good. Well, the Shellac. I do like Shellac and Sprain. They're like a newer band. I think they're really cool. Yeah, Sprain's cool. But, but I wouldn't say inspiration. I don't think, like, we listen like that much. Yeah. Go. Well, the thing is, like, when we write, it's like we never actually have like anything in mind. Oh like, really? I guess that's the whole point of like why we love like this and this project and what we're doing uh-huh. this project as in the band like is because like we just like we're just making stuff we've always wanted to hear uh-huh. basically so it's like obviously we have inspirations as people from music of our entire lives yeah different inspirations we have like yeah. almost completely different inspirations at times most of the time yeah. but that's what's like really fun is like that's how these songs come out like that ep that's how that came out we just made it you know what i mean yeah like we never like have a goal yeah i don't think what yeah. makes it fun so i don't think it's like a specific inspiration but like we're basically inspired by like almost everything we listen to we look we like just like all all the shit we listen to it's like yeah. it's like everything we've ever learned you know what uh-huh. i mean like it's just one of those things it's just all of our knowledge applied to something yeah dude that's honestly really sick that like i kind of love that like there's actually like no kind of like i guess you know dead inspiration like a lot of bands will be like oh you sound like this did you want to and they're like yeah we're going for that you know yeah. which is like interesting because you guys are like no nah, i don't really listen to that you know like i don't really listen to them wow like where well, they're cool i don't but i'm not like a yeah dude that's I've honestly really cool of <laughs> personally I think but they really have funny. but i, I have really you know what i mean though. and it's also it's like the recording style yeah, yeah you're yeah. right yeah oh wait you're saying it's like the recording style that makes it sound something i think it's the, the way that the sound because i went because when i did Kind of go back to listen to uh unwound i was just like oh yeah i hear because the recording the way the drums and stuff sound. i think that's really not the songs or anything else and if that's just me saying that wow. yeah what we're going for is just good you know like we just want it to be good you guys are just trying to make straight bangers yeah that's our only <laughs> hopes in just, life it's what just is there like good music that maybe can last maybe hopefully what is there six songs on the ep or the on the record six songs on the record Dude, so just six, five, just five straight bangers the entire time. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully people think that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that. So I mean, I guess you have, oh, you, 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 have, you have one fan. Um, <laughs> so I guess this is uh, not really related to the music. I mean, I guess it is. So give me the craziest story you have about writing this record. Was there any like rock star band drama going on here, or was it just like smooth sailing yeah, the entire time? I think we're kind. Of, <laughs> I don't want to say like we're boring, but like we don't like we're not like a. I don't know we don't i don't go out a lot i'll speak for myself i don't go out a lot like I, we don't like i don't drink a lot or do drugs or anything. yeah but um so i don't have any stories <laughs> yeah i feel I just, that just, what's uh, a story like what's like even this fuck i think i think i think the only written like story was i think the first song we made was the wheel right for this yeah right i'm pretty sure Is that and going to, yeah, yeah that yeah, doesn't yeah. count then, but 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 i think like the I guess wholesome story is just like we made the wheel and we're just like it was just like click and we were yeah. just like we gotta make something that feels like Hold this on. for the whole project once we made that because we kind of made that like literally in like two hours i think 
Yeah. It was just one of those songs that was just like, like I said, it just came out of us because mm-hmm. I think we had taken a break, a little break, and we came back and we made that. Yeah. And then it, it clicked in our heads. We're like, let's like go for like a project. Like, like let's finally make something and then make it feel as good as this. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Just make it fun, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, another thing I saw, you guys dropped some like really cool jewelry and like merch along with your records. Like, what can you tell me like about that? Like, what's the story behind like the jewelry and stuff? Uh, my girlfriend does like jewelry. I guess she has like a, like a little business. Mm-hmm. So I asked her to help us out making that. So she did like all the jewelry. We did the posters. Oh, that's tight. She basically handled all that. And that, it did really well. Yeah, we're, we we're just thought it just that. had to be cool to go with the aesthetic of the uh, little EP. Like, you know, to release some stuff. And like. honestly, looks like, yeah, it looks really sick. It, it looks like they're made out of like resin or something like that. Yeah, I think they're all handmade. I don't know what she does. She's kind of crazy at that. <laughs> did she make yeah. your? Did she make the earring you're wearing? Uh, she made. Well, this is a safety pin. She made this one. I think. Yeah, she did. Oh, that's dope. This, yeah, this was not handmade though. But it's just like a metal. Yeah, our goal is just cool merch, like just not just not always do some T-shirts, you know. I, I like, like it because yeah, dude, it's just like non-traditional. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like we're gonna put out some earrings. You know what I'm saying? Like how often are you gonna go up to like a band's like merch table, especially like a DIY band, and just be like, yo, buy some earrings, like buy something <laughs> sick, you know, like just random like that, you know? Yeah, we just want cool stuff. Yeah, that's tight. So, um, are you guys gonna be doing like tapes or like? you know any like physical music or anything soon uh well we do have an album coming out soon so we'll probably do it all with that oh really you guys are working on some new stuff so so what do we got cooking what's in the oven we got what 10 10 10 track 11 track oh wow that's insane yeah almost almost finished yeah pretty much finished it's finished (laughs) we're already yeah already writing second album Oh wow, dude, that's crazy! You guys are just like pumping tracks out. Yeah. So oh. so. <laughs> so when are you guys planning on dropping this uh this record? Soon this year. This year. Sometime Richard. this year, yeah. For sure this year. <laughs> Maybe then. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometime this year. <laughs> Is it hard to like you know just keep this away from like I guess putting it out? You know, I feel like if I were you guys and like I, like if I had a record that was just done, I'd be like, dude, I it's hard for me to just like, like I just want to put it out you know what I'm it, saying like it's that, but it's, it's, such a, weird it's also like from a promotional level it's like we can't play shows right now yeah, yeah. so like sometimes it could feel like a waste or like, I don't know but I feel that I feel that we've been kind of wanting to hold on until we could play shows again but it's getting to the point where it's like obviously there's a new normal so it's like we kind of feel like just dropping it sometimes I feel that but we'll, we'll, we'll see if you guys want another gig here let me know <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, what what's your guys' favorite song on your on your most recent one that you just released on Valentine's Day, Supernova? My Sandscraper. Yeah, that's honestly my favorite too. Yeah, like the first three, I think any of those, uh, those are those are the best things. Hell yeah. Yeah, I really like one and two. I like probably the wheel. Probably the wheel. The wheel. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. So, um, we're getting close to, uh, wrapping up the, uh, the little interview here. Um, I have some fan questions though. You guys have a ton of fans. They're just blowing up my DMs. Nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not a ton, but we got some. So So, um, somebody was like, ah, oh, dude, I forgot to write down the usernames, but anyways, this person wants to know if you guys still pee in bottles yeah yes. it's kind of, it's not that we want to it's that we have to we're no we don't have to I don't, I don't <laughs> so we will we will we practice at the studio it's it's um <laughs> it's like two stories and we're on the top story uh-huh. and you gotta get you gotta get like unlock like a gate and then a door to use the bathroom uh-huh. sometimes it's too much so it's just inconvenient <laughs> yeah it's faster sometimes yeah, you and you're and like when you're in the zone too that's what i was can. saying sometimes you're just like rocking too hard you forget yeah. that you have to pee until it's like now or never type yeah deal. exactly yeah i feel that yeah, so thanks. sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do you know what i'm saying yeah exactly thank you for understanding yeah dude so uh i guess dylan this is another question here dylan uh wants to know what your guys's favorite cartoons are 
Oh my god. That's a mm. good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I don't I don't think I watched those. Or never did. He's a grown up, you don't watch cartoons. <laughs> you never yeah. watched you never watched them when you were a kid? Yeah. Uh yeah, but like I was not like a Nickelodeon guy. I was like a Disney channel Disney channel kid. Okay, well what was your favorite Disney channel show? Um it wasn't a cartoon, but like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or something. Dude, that show was sick, right? Yeah, those little kids were funny. Yeah, dude, that was a good one. Yeah, I honestly probably spent so much time watching that one. And then I think it was it's Phineas. And... Every every character was good. Yes, dude. And then Phineas and Ferb I thought was good too. Uh, that one's cool, when yeah. I was young. Have you seen have you seen that a post that Chief Keep was watching Phineas and Ferb in his room? Or what? Something? And he has like and he has like crazy speakers and someone's like someone's like, Why do you have subtitles on? And he's like, Because my it's like a movie theater. I have <laughs> <speakers>. <laughs> Dude, so imagine <laughs> watching stuff. Phineas and Ferb with like just insane like studio monitors or something yeah, like, like that. Just movie. yeah, bro, that'd be so funny. Yeah, that's like that's like a life or death question. Yeah, dude, it really is, dude. A safe one, and it actually is one of my favorite cartoons, SpongeBob. Dude, you can't go wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I still watch it because my little brother watches it, so I always watch it with him, and I always like showing him the older episodes because he only watches because you know the tv only shows new ones now are they still are they still making new ones yeah they're still i, I don't know about like i don't know how recent but like there's a bunch of new ones that i haven't seen and then but i just show him a bunch of old ones and and he, he and they're just like they're they're still stand as like such good such good oh they do like dude like you just chill with anybody and no matter what someone's gonna drop a spongebob quote am i right or am i right you right. know, like you'll just be chilling with anybody. First time chilling with them, dude. You're just like kicking it, doing anything. My something leg. happens, my leg. You know, something like <laughs> harder sauce. Yeah, but, dude. No one, no one like people can say like, oh, I'm not really into it, but no one hates it. Except, yeah. Except like parents sometimes. They're like, oh, he's annoying. Yeah. The people who grew up with it, no one hates it. Exactly, dude. Good shit. Great shit. Anyways, we still got a. Uh... Thing at the top of my head, off the top of my head. I'm going to say Adventure Time. I was going to say Adventure Time, regular show, those go anyway. Okay, those ones were always Adventure dope, Time, dude. The lore is insane. The lore is so beautiful and fleshed out. And John DiMaggio is a king. And then, like, my favorite cartoon movie is definitely Return of the Cat right now. Return right of now. the Cat? Yeah. I've never heard of it. Studio Ghibli yeah. movie. Oh, really? So flawless. Oh, my God. It I'll was to, amazing to watch that. You I'll have to check it out, dude. You have to watch that. Who? What else has the this? Uh, Ponyo, uh, Totoro, my neighbor. Oh, Totoro. okay. That, that, that studio, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the most like, like those movies that will last with me forever. I'm a newer fan. Then. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I don't watch movies, so I also don't know them. But I know like the you know that's the one with like the big flying like thing, right? So, yeah. 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 See there, I I recognize it. That's you like, know. is that Ponyo? It's one of them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's got a lot of flying objects. So, uh, anyways, someone else is asking, "What's the last show you played before lockdown, and like, what's like most memorable about about it and stuff?" Was it the barn? The barn. The barn? Oh yeah, the barn. Um, with yeah, murmur, right? It was I, like a yeah. Barn. Okay, the a barn. We played a barn. <laughs> the barn, and it was. <laughs> It was with this band called White Caps Motel and then this band called Murmur. Well, Murmur. Murmur. Everyone, yeah, everyone Murmur's knows. dope, dude. I, I like Murmur. And this, this is actually, the world. this is like a great, like we're great we brought this up because this is like what helped us a lot. So that's a great, yeah. So this, this show happened and it was, it was one of the shows like bands went on late. We didn't get on till late. So like we had to cut our song. We had like nine, like we were going to play eight songs. We ended up playing like four because we yeah. felt bad. With, Murmur was playing after us. We yeah. wanted to play too. And we played, and then after the guitarist of Murmur, his name's Max, he came up to us and he's like, oh, like, do you guys have anything recorded? And I was like, yeah, but we like, we want to record new stuff. He's like, oh, you should hit me up to record. So then we met up, we talked to him, and then he's the one who actually helped us record this record. Oh, that's and sick, dude. Album. Yeah. He's like our secret fourth member, honestly. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Like, he's, he's the best. Like, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a great match. Like, we're just a great match. Yeah, that's dope. So Max plays guitar in Murmur, you said? Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude! That's awesome. Brothers, two brothers, two brothers. Yeah, He's in two brothers. That's dope. Uh, yeah, yeah. Murmur, Murmur hit me up recently to have them on the show. Um, They're really cool. Take them. 
Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm gonna have to hit and take him up on that offer soon. Um, crazy, crazy musician. Like, um, obviously great artist wise, but like musician wise, like Kai is the best drummer I know. Oh, Kai, really? Like, drummer's Seriously. amazing the bass is amazing get max the vocalist amazing like yeah. i don't feel like i'm that great of like a musician like yeah. songwriting we're gay or whatever but like musicianship i don't i don't think we like take pride in that but we're them not. they're like <laughs> really good yeah they're great that's dope so this is the last question that we have from all of your tons of fans uh so anyways do you guys know the 805 and revolt podcast by chance anyways so the 805 and Revolt people, they want to know your, or they want to hear you talk about JFK's legacy. John F. Kennedy? Yeah. Or the other one? <laughs> they just, legacy? He, he just said John Kennedy. Is that JFK? Uh, That's probably JFK, right? That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't keep up too well on American political figures, you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyways. I think they're trying to stump us. Yeah, they're trying to stop. Yeah, I got no comment on that one. <laughs> no question is that. Yeah, I don't think this was meant for this was meant for this was meant for lobster fight next week. <laughs> oh, true, dude. Yeah, wrong band. Oh, that's <laughs> lobster. Yo, lobster fight. So, um, what? Yeah, he's just another guy. Got yeah. <laughs> another guy got shot in the head. Another guy that tried to fuck us over. Yeah, right. Probably. In all honesty. <laughs> no, one hundred percent. So, uh, anyways. We got one last question, guys. Are you guys ready for it? Yes. Uh, I think I have a well, feeling. Now that you said that. I think I got a feeling. Yeah, yeah we got one, one last one. So a rat is going to jump into your mouth. Do you want this rat to jump into your mouth head first or butt first? And why? Are, are, can rats even jump backwards? Okay, dude. So I have to describe this scene to everybody because nobody knows that, like, this can happen like nobody knows the scenario you know what i'm saying i don't think they can jump backwards but like what i envision in my head like when i ask this question oh. you feel me oh, so you guys know ratatouille right the movie of course classic so you know like in the the beginning where like the rats are hanging off the rafters and stuff and they're like oh my god you're gonna expose us to the humans you know what i'm saying so anyways i'm pretty sure what's his name remy falls mm-hmm. backwards you know and he's like oh god you know well, what if a human was like, oh my, a falling rat, dude, right in the mouth? So no, that's good. I'm glad you did. Yeah, right? So that's the that's the scenario. Uh, just like thinking about this this whole time, it, gives, it making me like, sh- like, give me the chills. I hear, uh, I hear you, dude. So just think about, um, you know, a, a dirty sewer rat or something like that. It make me cry. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm thinking... I'm definitely taking tail first. Yeah. Like, the head's kind of the head's crazy. It's scary. The, the blow, little black beady eyes, dude. Yeah, and the teeth, and like I, I can just imagine it moving and stuff. Ooh, like, oh, and okay. its whiskers, dude, just like all up against your teeth and stuff. Wrong, like, honestly. Yeah, I don't mind tails. I don't mind rats, but just jumping in my mouth. I, you got to go ahead because then. That's what I said. Oh no, I didn't. You said butt. Yeah, I'm, I'm lying. You said tail. <laughs> you got to go ahead because then you just. Take them out so that they're not squirming in your oh mouth. Oh my god, that's brutal. That's the worst. That's the worst part. I don't want that guy. First of all, I don't want feces in my mouth, and then I don't want him squirming in my mouth. True. So just knock him out, dude. Just get him out. Just crunch. Take a little. You let know. the rat go, man. Let him go, Thomas. Or, dude, or you can just let him go. You know what I'm saying? We like want, we don't want him in our mouths. Yeah, we catch him. <laughs> I catch him and I put him in my cage and feed him and take care of him. That's a good answer, dude. I've actually never gotten that one either. I've had I had a rat as a child. Did you? Yeah, his name was Houdini because he'd escape all the time. <laughs> so you have like a connection to this question, sorta. You know what I'm saying? Like an emotional connection. You're just like, dude, I would advocate. never put Houdini in my mouth. Yeah, no. I, I would never. Asking. I would never hurt Houdini. Like, I want Houdini to be Houdini still. I want him to escape from his kid. You know, if Houdini was truly Houdini, he just wouldn't be in that situation. Exactly. My grandpa fed him a lot, so then he got fat and lazy. Oh, that's dope, dude. It wasn't him. Maybe it was another rat. He would just be. <laughs> he, <would just, laughs> he, he had a little castle in there, like made of like Imagine X blocks or whatever. Yeah. And he had a bunch of newspaper, and he would just like, he'd, he'd just come out with his nose and just grab some food. He would just chill all the time. What a homie, dude. Yeah, he was. He lived a long time. How long do rats live? 
Yeah. How long do you have? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure I had them five years, but I'm a li- I was a little kid, so like I'm probably exaggerating. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that sounds about right. I don't know though, dude. I heard, I heard, so. I heard rats. So. Rats can like live like three to like twelve months because like they're obviously they're prey and stuff. That's why like that's why they're so paranoid. And they're constantly like checking their heads and stuff, and they're always on walls and stuff because yeah. everyone's out to get them. So oh, a rat on a wall. <laughs> well, yeah, like they won't they won't walk in the center of a room. You put them in a room and they'll always be on the wall. Oh, do they really? Uh, yeah, because like they, they're just natural like always Dick like times. paranoid. Yeah. Times, dude. yeah, that's good stuff. So, anyways, guys, yeah, thank, thanks for answering that. Um, I think that brings us to the end. Do you guys have any last remarks you want to put into the airwaves and archives? Where can people keep up with your your projects? Follow us on Instagram. Thank That's you. where we put everything. Yeah, we're on Bandcamp, Spotify. We're on all the all the stuff. TikTok. Hell yeah. Luxant. You're on Luxant. TikTok? Yeah, we're on TikTok. Hell yeah. So, do you guys, like, post TikToks, or is your music just on uh, TikTok? No, like our music's on TikTok. You guys are gonna be the next band that goes viral via TikTok. We're gonna be like like Charlie. And I'm I'm gonna and I'm gonna be like, had him here first, folks. After <laughs> yeah. after you guys are like super huge, you know, getting like a million dollar record label, I'm gonna be like, yo, check out my YouTube video right here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get our hopes up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's uh, Instagram at Blexen. B L U X A N T, check them out, dude. Honestly, one of my favorite bands to come out of Oxnard, and I'm hoping they're uh, one of yours too. Now after that, you know, very sick performance. So I think that's about all we have for today. Thanks for tuning into TBD on KCSB FM 91.9 every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., and NetNet Radio every Saturday 8 p.m. This is Eye Candy from Oxnard. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Yeah, we like what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you guys. Back on your side. With the back, with the back.